Welcome to your lesson on chords in a circle. Here's a circle, here's a chord. A chord has endpoints. It is only a segment, it's a portion of a line, and it is a portion of a line that connects two points in a circle. All right, so we are in our unit about circles. Uh, we started talking about many things, so let's recap some of them here. First of all, a circle is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point to the center. So if you look here, we have a center point, and we have the collection or set of all the points here, which are the circle, that are all the same distance from the center. And of course, we know that distance is the radius. So that is a circle, the set of all those points. Okay, other circle voc vocabulary you should know. Uh, of course, that is the center. This here is called the diameter. It is a chord, but it's a chord that passes through the center. Uh, we have this, it is a radius. Okay, some other words you should know. Uh, this, a portion of the circumference of a circle is called an arc. This here is a chord, that's what we've been talking about, a chord. And this here is a line, it's called an online study guide that you can each then use uh, for our upcoming assessments. Please open your study guide, we will add some notes to it and also a new theorem. Okay, I hope your study guide is open, and if it is, you are on your first page, and the first page has some definitions that we need to add. Uh, we have given you the definition of a circle, the set of all points which are equidistant from a fixed point called the center. Now you're going to fill in the rest of these definitions. Okay, so here they are. Here's circle, circumference, arc, and chord. Please take care of describing. Okay, fantastic. I hope you added those few, and I hope you understand the, the definitions there. There's a few more to add. They are semicircle, diameter, radius, and tangent. So again, pause the video and take a moment to add these definitions to your circle study guide. Okay, I hope you've added those. Now let's, uh, let's continue. Let's, let's continue and uh, look at some theorems. So last time we talked about theorems, and a theorem is a statement which has been proven true by a special kind of logical argument called a rigorous proof. In other words, a theorem is something that if we know some facts or evidence and we use that, those facts and evidence to then prove something new, this new thing we have proven using facts is called a theorem. And that's what this unit's all about. We're going to be looking at different theorems for circles. One theorem we've looked at already is Thales' theorem. We're going to look at it in GeoGebra, which we've already done, but we're going to just recap the theorem. Basically, it is a theorem about an angle that is inscribed in a semicircle. Let's take a look in GeoGebra. Welcome to GeoGebra. I hope you're in as well. When you get to GeoGebra, you always get to the screen. Always uh, know that you should be logged in and you'll know because you'll see your logo here. If I click on there, I will see any saved projects I have. So here's what happens when I click on there. So I see my account. I see two saved projects here. One is the theorem we looked at last time. I hope you saved yours as well. So you should have that if you check your saved projects as well. So if I click on that, let's take a look at and recap Thales theorem from last time. So here's the project I created. We have Thales theorem. Here we see a circle and we see this angle inscribed inside the semicircle is inscribed in the semicircle, the half circle. And basically what this theorem tells us is, all right, let me drag this. As I move that point there, no matter uh, where I move the point to, the resulting angle there is always 90 degrees. So basically any angle you create within a half circle or semicircle that has that opens up onto the diameter here will have an angle measure of 90 degrees. It'll always have a measure of 90 degrees. Okay, that was Thales' theorem. Let's uh, go on with our lesson for today, looking at a new theorem. Okay, so to recap that one, the angle in the semicircle is a right angle. So angle ABC, that means this angle here, this middle letter is always the vertex of the angle, equals 90 degrees. Okay, so you have added that also, hopefully, to your study guide. In under theorem one, you have the theorem here, and you have the diagram that you created, and you've cut an image and pasted an image into your study guide. Let's do that now with the second theorem. Theorem two is about this here. Look at this diagram. We have a circle, we have a chord. I see a 90 degree angle. So what do you see? In your own words, describe maybe, what do you see here, or what maybe what conclusion can you make based on what you see here? What do you think? 
Okay, let's take a look uh, in GeoGebra again for this one. We're going to recreate this diagram. So follow these steps. Jump into GeoGebra now. Make sure you're logged in and you're going to follow the same steps I do in order to create this diagram. And by creating this diagram, we'll be able to then, or constructing this diagram, we'll be able to then make a conclusion about this. Okay, let's do here. Now when you're in this main interface for GeoGebra, make sure you select from this drop-down menu, Geometry because we're going to be doing geometric constructions uh, and that's what we're going to use here. So here's our menu. I can hit more to see more things here. Okay, let's recreate that diagram we just saw, which is this one. We're trying to figure out what's going on here. So I need a circle, I need a chord, and I need this here, a line from the center, which is 90 degrees at the chord or perpendicular to the chord. So let's start with the circle. Please do this in your on your computer as well. So I'm creating a circle. There's a circle. And uh, now I needed a chord. So I'm going to go to segment because a chord is a segment. And I'm going to create a segment from here to anywhere on the circle. There, I've created a segment. And the next thing in this in this theorem is, okay, what happens if you draw uh, a perpendicular from, from here to here? So let's try that. I'm going to look for perpendicular here. Hmm, perpendicular line right here, perpendicular line. So I'm going to go from here and it needs to be perpendicular to this. So when you're drawing a line, you always hit a point and then something else. So I'm going to click on there and it automatically created this perpendicular. In other words, it made a 90 degree angle here. It didn't do an, a line at some ang other angle. It made a perfect 90 degree angle right here. So now I've created that. All right. So again, circle, then chord using segment and then perpendicular line to make this. Now, uh, in this theorem, we're trying to figure out some kind of relationship maybe. So just looking at this, do you see maybe a relationship? Uh, maybe it's more obvious if I go like this, if I move this value here and I move this B value here. Oh, let me move that again there. Hmm. Are you starting to see something? Do you see something maybe about uh, this chord? Cause this is a theorem about a chord. What do you, what do you hypothesize about this chord? Okay, maybe you hypothesize that this part of the chord is the same length as this one. And that's exactly what this theorem is all about. So what I'm going to do next is add a point. I'm going to add the point at the intersection here. And now I'm going to figure out how long is this and how long is this? Because I want to confirm because these look like they're the same length. I want to confirm they are. And over here under measure, we used this angle tool before, but now we're going to use distance or length. We're going to measure length. So I'm going to click on that one. I'm going to click on C and D. And it's going to give me the length of that. There it is. And then I'm going to click on B and D and it's going to give me the length of that as well. Oh, look, the length is the same. I'm going to use the move tool here again. I'm going to move this just a little bit. So it's here, move this one. So it's here. Okay. Now we can see that those are the same length. So basically what kind of what I saw is my eyes, I was able to confirm here by measuring. I'm going to move these points again, B and just confirm as I change that when I change the chord, do those two lengths remain the same? So as you watch that, look at the length of BD and CD. They're always the same. Look, they're four and four. No matter where I move this to, they remain the same length. So this is our, our second theorem. It tells us that when you have a chord, it is always going to be cut in half. That means we'll have two equal halves. And the word for that in geometry is bisect. So a chord will always be bisected by the perpendicular that passes through the center. Okay, that is our next theorem. So make sure now at this point you hit save, which I'm going to do as well. So I'm going to go here in the three bars, save, and I'm going to call this theorem two. Theorem two, chord in a circle. And I'm going to hit save. So now I'm saving it in my account. It's, it's going to be there forever. And you're also going to take a screen capture of this and add it to your, add it to your uh, study guide. Okay, so let's go back to the study guide now. So what do we see here? Well, we kind of saw it. And basically to adding to your study guide now under theorem two, chords in a circle, add this. The perpendicular from the center of a circle to a chord bisects the chord. And then, and as a result, AM, this segment here, equals BM, this segment here. The chord is bisected. Okay, great. Add that and then add your diagram from GeoGebra. Awesome. So now that you've added to your study guide, uh, let's apply this theorem and solve a couple problems. And there's a diagram I had as well. So your diagram might look something like that in your study guide. 
Okay, excellent. Let's take some notes. Do this in your notebook, please. Okay, first question. A circle has a radius four centimeters and a chord length of six. Find the shortest distance from the circle's center to the chord. Okay, a circle has radius four. So right away we know, oh, by the way, let's, uh, before we even do the radius, what is the shortest distance from the center to this chord? Well, you could draw a line like this from here to here, or a line from here to here, or a line like this. The shortest distance is always the one that makes 90 degree angle. Because notice if I go diagonally like that, like that, that will be quite a bit longer than if I went straight down and made a 90 degree angle. So this is definitely the shortest distance from that point to there. So the shortest distance, always perpendicular, always 90 degrees. Now, uh, what else do we know? We know the radius is four, so I'm gonna draw this radius here. Of course, I could have drawn a radius in any direction, but in these problems, it often helps to have a triangle. So I drew the radius straight to there. Now I label that as four. And the chord has a length of six. So this whole thing is six. Now, what uh, it says find the shortest distance. So we need to find this. Uh, we need to know what that is. We do know by this new theorem we learned that this perpendicular bisects this chord. So if this is all six, this portion here is three. And now we have a, a simple problem. We have a right triangle. We know this is three, this is four. So we can use Pythagorean theorem to solve the length here, which is what we need, the shortest distance. So how are we gonna do this? Let's do it step by step. Here's the diagram with a little more detail. Add that to your notebook. We're looking for X. We know these two are congruent. So they're marked here as congruent. We have six. Again, make sure you have a detailed diagram. And now let's solve. First, we can state that M here, this point M, is the midpoint of chord AB. And how do we know it's the midpoint? Because of the theorem we just learned, chord of a circle. There's, that's what we can say. That's the reason we know that this is the midpoint, because that's what this theorem tells us. Next, therefore, we can say AM, so this portion here, is 3. So we already did that conclusion a minute ago, but we need to, in a proof structure, you need to support your work. Um, all right, next, in triangle OMA, O being the center, OMA, we can write x squared here plus 3 squared equals 4 squared, Pythagorean theorem. That's our reason here for writing that, Pythagoras. And then we just go on to solve that. x squared plus 9 equals 16. Move the 9 over there, 7. Take the square root on both sides. So we get x is actually plus, plus or minus root of 7. But in our case, we cannot have a negative answer for this length. So we say x equals root of seven. We only take the positive answer because x must be greater than zero. Great work. We just finished this one. Let's go on to another problem. Please draw this diagram in your notebook and let's try to solve this one. It's very similar, but uh, we're looking for a different thing. In the last problem, we're looking for the, the length of this segment here, the shortest distance from the center to the chord. Now we're looking for the length of the entire chord. You can see x here, but the process is going to be very similar. Let's begin here. I'm going to label these points. This point A, this point B, and this point M. Again, M meaning midpoint, because we know by this theorem, when you have a perpendicular from the center to a chord, that it bisects the chord, therefore this must be the midpoint. Okay, let's begin with this statement. M is the midpoint of AB. Yeah, it's the midpoint, because this has been bisected. And we know that, again, in parentheses, you always put the the reason you know this. We know this is the midpoint because of this theorem, the chord in a circle theorem the one chord in a circle theorem, okay? Next, uh, now that we know that, therefore, MB, this length here, this segment here, is half X. If the whole chord is X, then this must be half X, because again, AM and MB are equal, so this must be half of the full length. Great. Next, I'm drawing a radius from here to here. Again, having triangles helps. That radius has a length of four, there it is. Okay, now using Pythagorean theorem, we know that this length squared, which is half x squared, sorry, this one is half x squared, plus this one squared, which is three x, sorry, three squared, <laughs> equals the hypotenuse squared, which is four squared. So here's Pythagorean. The reason we can write this statement is Pythagoras or Pythagorean theorem. Great, and we don't have to show a reason for every step, but for this one, we needed it here. Okay, let's do the algebra now. Half x squared, you square the half and you square the x. You get one quarter. Half times half is one quarter. X times x is x squared. Over here, we have seven because this is nine. This is 16. I subtracted the nine from 16 to get seven. Let's continue. Let's multiply both sides by four. This multiplied by four gets rid of this fraction. We have x squared. This becomes 28. Take the square root on both sides. 
So x equals the root of 28. I didn't put the negative answer here because I already know x has to have a positive length. So I just put the positive answer. x equals root of 28. And the root of 28 simplifies to 2 root 7. Why? Because 28 is 4 times 7. And we can take the square root of 4 to get 2. So we have 2 root 7. Excellent. Now with those two examples, you should be able to solve all kinds of problems like this. So here's two similar ones. Give, give these a try. Can you solve for uh, x in this diagram, which is again the shortest distance. So it's like the first example we did. And in this one, we want to solve uh, the length of the radius, which we're calling x. Try those out. Okay, now that you've tried, check your answers. This one's x equals 3, and this one is x equals root of 29. If you didn't get those answers, make sure you uh, check your work carefully. Make sure you've drawn the right triangles. You can do it. Uh, please read this problem and see if you can uh, write or draw a diagram. Draw a diagram to uh, match what the words here say. And the diagram will be similar to the ones you've seen. And once you've drawn the diagram, find the radius of that circle. Okay, the answer to this is 2 root 5. That means if that 2 was under the root, it would be a 4, so it could be root of 20. And if you didn't uh, reduce root of 20, uh, you could have had that answer. So here we go. If you are stuck on that one, don't worry. You can check it later, and uh, we'll, I'll help you out in class. But for now, make sure you, you know you have the tools to solve that. So double-check your work and see if you can get there. Great job. We'll see you soon.